Creating and saving effects chains or channel strips is a great way of speeding up your workflow while keeping things neat and organized. In this video, we'll explore the various ways this can be achieved. Effects chains can be created and saved both from the existing plugins in your edit or from a new empty rec environment. Here we can see that our vocal track has EQ, compression and delay applied to it. I'm pretty happy with the sound I've achieved here and would like to save this effects chain for future recall. To do this, simply highlight all the plugins, right click and select wrap these plugins in a new rack plugin. The rack is immediately created, displaying our effects chain. We can name the rack here. You'll notice this name is now displayed back on the rack instance. To save our effects chain, simply click save and create new preset. Here we can add a brief description and assign some tags. Click OK and the effects chain is saved. Our effects chain can now be quickly recalled and applied to other tracks in this edit or future edits. We can also create an effects chain from scratch from within the rack environment. Here I'm going to drag the plugin object onto our drum track, navigate to plugin racks and then choose create new empty rack. Here we have an empty rack, and it's here we'll create a channel strip for our drums. I'll start with a high pass filter by dropping a plugin into the red box. This can be achieved with the plugin object from within the rack, the main plugin object, and also the browser. I'll be using the plugin object within the rack for this example. Once dropped into the box, we have the option of automatically connecting the plugin or leaving it unconnected. I'm going to leave the plugins unconnected for now and then wire them up later. Clicking on the plugin brings its UI into view. The plugin's core parameters are also displayed here. I'll set this to cut off anything below 40 Hz before moving on to the other plugins. Next, I'll add a compressor. Followed by an EQ. Let's get these connected starting with the left channel. And now the right channel. I'm going to play back our drums while we tweak these plugins a little. I'm quite happy with this result, but the output of the compressor is hitting the EQ a little hard. To fix this, I'm going to first break the connection between the compressor and the EQ. Using the plugin object, I'll then add a waveform volume and pan plugin. I'll also add a waveform level meter for reference. Let's connect these back up and make some adjustments. Once happy with our channel strip, we can name it and save it as before. Again, descriptions and tags can be added, making it easy to identify and recall our channel strip in future edits. Our rack creations can be viewed in both the traditional rack view and also the stack editor view by clicking here. Here I've applied the factory faceplate presets to both the EQ and the compressor. This is achieved by clicking on the three horizontal lines and navigating to the factory folder. Like the rack editor, the stack editor can be used to create effects chains. 
And if you're making serial connections, this can be an easier option. Simply use the plugin object to drop plugins into the stack. Notice how the plugins connect automatically in the rack view. Another advantage of using the stack view is that we can easily alter the positioning of the plugins. As we do this, the connections automatically update. The faceplates we added in the stack editor will also show up in the rack editor. Simply click on a plugin and they are brought into view. Faceplates, macros and controller mappings will all be recalled with our effects chain, making the rack an incredibly powerful tool. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.